Hello and welcome. I have with me Penny Johnson, who is an independent researcher associated with the Institute of Women's Studies, Bazit University, Ramallah, and is also an associate editor with Jerusalem Quarterly. Hello. Hello. So I have a bunch of questions to ask of you from the edited book Seeking Palestine. Uh, I would begin with uh, the question of a phrase that you used there, which really struck me, which is that this was you and uh, Raja editing it, weren't conceiving of it to be a representative anthology, but an imaginative one. And I know it means a number of things when uh, talking about Palestine, but uh, I would want you to talk a little bit about this idea itself. Well, the politics of representation, I think, is a very vexed uh, and kind of a troubling question. And we were looking for something else. We were looking for a sort of ground where Palestinian writers, and you're right, could use a sort of encounter between memory and imagination in a more intimate key. And in that way, to think again about uh, these uh, kind of iconic words of home and exile in the present tense of Palestine, in this very fragmented and difficult uh, time. And I think the writers really took up this challenge, at, at least as I remember them and recall the pieces. Each of them was very individual, but each of them uh, looked at home and exile in, in their own life in Palestine and outside Palestine in a way that was not nostalgic, but that was sort of breaking some kind of new ground. And that's what we were looking for. Uh, and I, w I want to say that we were very happy that this book was both initiated and born in India, uh, <laughs> thanks really to Ritu Menon uh, of Women Un Unlimited in Delhi. Yeah, in fact, it's a wonderful con collection. It's this Arabesque collection, which also has writings from Iraq, from a number of other yes, places. It's, it's beautiful. It's a great initiative. Yeah. Uh, I would, uh, mo moving back to the more uh, to historical aspects of this, I mean, I would like to imagine that most such I conceptions, such ideas, of course, emerge, and perhaps more so in, in Palestine, with the immediate realities um, on the ground. Well, do you have any recollection of, were there uh, ideas on the ground that kind of led to the coalescence of this particular idea of this book that you talk about, this imaginative uh, anthology? Well, I think less ideas, uh, but a very troubled present where Palestine both is and is not. Uh, we seek it and as I think one of the poets said, we are seeking for something that has not happened yet and yet is not lost. So this requires, I think, a writer's imagination uh, to come to grips with uh, this kind of is and is not. And that can even be done in a comic vein. Like one of the writers, Saad al Amri, is in an Italian airport. And they're looking for the code for Palestine. And what is it? She tries occupied territories, Palestine occupied territories, West Bank and Gaza, uh, you know, everything. And finally it turns out PS. And she says, maybe it's Palestinian stupidity. I don't know. Uh, we cannot find the code. And we cannot always find the language. And that's part of what Seeking Palestine is about. Yeah, I guess that's where um, another uh, part of what you wrote really, really struck me was that this is a conversation. And I love the way you say a conversation, perhaps amongst friends in the hills of Ramallah or, you know, to, on a seaside in Beirut, somewhere else. And, and, and it really comes through like that. I would just take one example of um, where Raja Shahade talks about this layers of meanings of a building and what, what it means ah, to yes. the historical memory of a place and the deep loss associated with it. But just next to that, just after that, is Murid Bhaguti talking about <laughs> Palestine being driven by his driver Mahmood in that cab. Yes. So, and, and that really plays out like a conversation, you know. But I was wondering if, uh, with, with the benefit of hindsight, you thought there was some conversation which could have also made to that book a conversation, another idea that 
I mean, there are always those ideas like, okay, this could have also been there. Is there something like that that you think could have go could have gone into this book or maybe another version of the book? Well, there are other writers that would be, have been wonderful to include, uh, but a conversation I think is ongoing. I mean, I uh, you brought up Marid Barghouti's wonderful piece, where. It was in a particular time in the second intifada where none of us could move around. And there were, well, there still are thousands of roadblocks. And he sees Palestine recreated in this driver uh, who gets somehow, some way, gets his passengers to Jericho from Jerusalem uh, by the most intricate routes. And we've all experienced that, going through olive groves, going through uh, quarries, going all, all over the place. And so I think it's that kind of uh, recreation of Palestine in a moment uh, that begins a conversation, perhaps. And then, of course, the question of uh, nostalgia. Like you said in the beginning that uh, it wasn't uh, about nostalgia. But uh, I mean, I'm not just saying the politics of nostalgia but even the conversation of nostalgia, because we are talking about people who have such different uh, relationships to Palestine. I mean, you look at uh, Susan Abu al -Hawa, I mean, it, that, that amazing woman and the way she narrates her association. So, um, so maybe it's not romanticizing, but is the problem with nostalgia the romanticization? Or why would you say that nostalgia isn't really central to this? Nostalgia is when you sort of you know, put the past sort of in an amber uh, glass to sort of look at it or glorify it or mourn over it. Uh, it doesn't have an active force. I mean, that's why uh, I think we use the words of Mahmoud Darwish, home and exile are not words. They're not these overburdened just concepts. Home and exile are something else. And that's what we were looking at. Um. One of the final questions that I would have now is, um, and this is really important for me in the reading of this book, because um, your work and your association with women's studies, your academic work otherwise, has has opened up so many different aspects of the struggle. And uh, you're originally from the United States. That's right. So I would like to have some um, idea about your relationship to the struggle. Uh, and I think it's a, I mean, it's really a question of how various people are located around a question and everybody is located in a different way, including the writers who are all mm -hmm. tracing their ancestry in Palestine in different ways. But how do you associate with the struggle? And that's, I think, a fundamental question for a lot of people who have solidarity with Palestine. You know, what is that relationship that uh, takes us forward in that way? Mm. Well, I came to Palestine in 1982. Uh, uh, to Birzeit University. At that point, the universities, there was a kind of addiction by the Israeli army to closing universities. And they would close them every few months or so. And I'd been working with academics in the States and thought I would come for uh, one year uh, to work on issues from you know, the side of the, of, of the university. And of course, I have stayed for over 35 years and most of my lifetime, in fact. Uh, so perhaps I also found a home in Palestine, but many, Palestine is an international struggle, I think. Uh, when I came to Bir Zayt, uh, I was part, of, a quarter of the faculty had foreign passports, including some Palestinians. And it was a time when the army, again, the Israeli army, was requiring all of us to sign loyalty oaths against the Palestine Liberation Organization in order to get work permits. Uh, and nobody would. So we were all sort of undercover. Uh, and the same situation remains today with the international faculty at Bir Zayt. Uh, I know many young scholars that are not getting work permits. But it is an international struggle. There's a reason people come. And there's a reason people work together. And uh, in that way, Palestine is, is this idea of non-exclusion. Non of, of a place uh, of imagination and uh, of solidarity. And I think that's still there. Uh, we have to kind of always reclaim it. I mean, nothing is ever there permanently. We always, always have to bring it 
uh, back which is why the title seeking palestine and yes that's i mean that's really brilliant in the way that has been written off uh but just that final question of uh, because i um you said you went there uh, in in 1982 and they've continued to work there and i i know of a number of people who have made these journeys uh, in their uh, life but in typically i would say in my my generation so to speak uh, we have come to relate to palestine through different routes even perhaps because our own country's history has gone in a direction where a lot of important questions have just dropped off the map so uh, not just it's so i'm not asking how would they uh, sort of make that association but more like what do you think is the basis of the so that association which i believe can be there everywhere but uh, what are the nuances and grounds of that for a generation like today's which is also struggling in a world which is increasingly more rightward uh, neoliberal post colonialism the struggles of post colonialism uh, post colonial struggles are not in their recent memory so what would you say to a generation Well I think in many ways we're coming closer perhaps in the atmosphere of disaster that is the atmosphere of our globe right now we often say that one way to see Palestine it is sort of as a laboratory where practices of discrimination and inequality and uh were being exercised but I think these practices are are much more widespread in the globe today so I think for the younger generation which we are hoping will be able to uh, turn over uh some of the inequalities that we're all suffering from uh Palestine can be uh one a place to learn and two a place also to find uh find ways to to sort of combat some of the things that are not just in Palestine now but are very widespread around the globe absolutely thanks a lot that's all for today